Ever since I was a boy, I have always loved the woods. Or actually, had might be a better word, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So as a child, I lived in a house right next to a heavily wooded area. Every day I would go out into the woods with my friends, covered nearly every inch of the woods, hiking, camping, climbing trees, you name it. Woods were our playground. We controlled them. So I thought. Thinking back, I remember as we ran around the forest out of the corner of my eye, and I could see something quickly flitting between trees next to us, next to me. I put it off as my eyes playing tricks on me. Other times when I was camping with my friends and we were sitting around the fire, just out of the firelight, I could I could have sworn I saw a silhouette of something. And I turned away to get my friend's attention. The look at the thing, it was gone. Not a sound having been made. My friends laughed at me, joked that I was scared of the dark. I laughed with them, assuring them that it was simply a trick of the light. Or something. Sometimes at night, though, I'd look out the window at the forest. These were the scariest times because I couldn't rationally explain what it was. But when I looked out the window at the woods, I had to see a face. A face amongst the trees. Before it quickly disappeared. Those nights I couldn't sleep a wink. I still went into the woods fairly often, usually at the behest of my friends. I did my best to forget the strange face, which I managed to do for a while. I was 17, and my friends Hayden, Noah, Mason, my brother Kieran managed to annoy me into going camping in the woods with them. We packed up our gear, we headed to our usual spot in the woods. We set up a few hours later, it was dark. Had a fire running away. Noah sighed contently as he leaned back into his camping chair. Well, I'd say I did a good job if I do say so myself, he said. I rolled my eyes. Noah was 16 and a resident goofball. Jokes endlessly streamed from his mouth. Please, I replied. You sat on your ass the whole time. Hey, <laughs> I set up my chair, Noah retorted. I rolled my eyes again. Hayden, our group's token arrogant son of a bitch, and 16 as well, snorted in laughter. You didn't even do that, Hayden said. Kieran set it up while you were off looking for squirrels in the trees. I heard from a reliable source that an albino squirrel lives out here, Noah stated matter-of-factly. Curtis is not a reliable source, Mason cut in, using air quotes as he said, reliable source. Mason was a funny athletic kid and one of the youngest in the group at age 15. The guy's so high most of the time he might as well have seen a unicorn and believed it, he continued. Noah hesitated. He actually told me that he saw one over by the river. We all burst out laughing. Kieran, the youngest at 14, gave Noah a sarcastic thumbs up as Noah glared at us. You're such a dumbass, my brother told him. Noah grumbled under his breath as he crossed his arms. Let's just roast some marshmallows, okay? Noah said in a huff, attempting to change the subject. All right, all right, I replied, still grinning. I reached back behind my chair and groped around for the bag of marshmallows. The others were reaching for their roasting sticks as my fingers brushed not against the plastic bag, but against something smooth and warm, almost like, like skin. I yanked my hand away in fear and shock. I heard whatever I had just touched skittering off into the trees. I looked into the dark forest around us, but I couldn't see anything. My friend stared at me in confusion. Dude, Mason said after a few tense moments of silence. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, I said. My hand just, I brushed. I think I brushed an animal or something. That's all. Oh, don't be such a baby, Cameron, Eden said with a mocking grin. I glared at him as he continued. Pass me the marshmallows. Fuck you, I said, reaching back and tossing in the bag of marshmallows. Nothing was there this time. The mood quickly eased back in our general laughter and good cheer. But I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling that the forest was... The forest was giving me. Feeling that we weren't alone. I woke up the next morning to panic shouts and arguing. Rubbing the sleep from my eyes, I left my tent to see Mason, Kieran, and Noah yelling at each other. What the hell's going on? I asked, annoyed. Noah looked at me, a confused and frightened expression on his face. Hayden's gone, he told me, a fearful edge in his voice. What? I asked in bewilderment. Hayden's gone! 
No one replied. Vanished. Poof. Disappeared. No, he, he, he could have gone home, I said, trying to bring up some rationality in the situation. With all his stuff still here, Mason said, pointing at Hayden's chair and daybag. I blinked in confusion as I stared at the camping gear. You were tending with him, I said, returning my attention to Noah. He went to bed when we all did. Where'd he go? Last night, I heard him leave our tent to take a piss. Noah explained. I went back to sleep right after he left, and he's still not back. Fear was beginning to grip me as I tried to think of what could have happened. Maybe, maybe he got lost. In these woods? You can't get lost here. Look, Kieran cut in. Mason and I will go look for him. You guys pack up while we're gone, all right? All right, I said with a hesitant nod before adding, be careful. Mason and Kieran nodded in reply before marching off into the trees and out of sight. Noah and I began packing our camping gear. About an hour went by before we finished storing our gear and cleaning up the campsite. I sat down on a stump, balancing my leg nervously as we waited for Mason and Kieran. A few more minutes had passed when I heard them come back, or more accurately, run back. Their faces were pale and pure terror was written on them as they quickly grabbed their backpacks. We're leaving, Mason shouted through panic breaths. Wait, what, 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 what about Hayden? Noah replied, He's dead! Kieran answered, We need to leave now! Noah was about to protest, but listened and grabbed his and Hayden's backpacks. I quickly shouldered my bag and we began to run out of the forest. Panic was rising in our chests as we sprinted through the forest. I couldn't believe it. Hayden was dead. There wasn't anything deadly in these woods. The river wasn't fast or deep. None of our climbing trees were too tall. Falling from them barely merited a sprained ankle. There wasn't any bears or wolves in these woods either. We reached the tree line and burst into an open patch of grass between two houses. We slowed to a stop, gasping for air. No, no we used talk. What happened? Well, give me a damn minute. Mason huffed. We all went silent, resting, catching our breaths. The horror of the entire situation sank in during those quiet, tense moments as Kieran and Mason caught their breaths. We found Hayden near the river. Mason explained upon recovering. He shuddered as he remembered what he saw. He was... He was impaled on a tree branch. His... God, his hands were tied to two other branches above his head and his, his fucking intestine. His eyes had been clawed out and his face... Jesus, his face is... It's frozen. This awful look of horror. His shirt had been ripped open. Oh, God. Mason, Mason stopped talking and began to retch. Kieran picked up where he left off. Absolute terror in his face. Scratches in his chest were, were the words wrong one. Both of us threw up on the spot before running back to the campsite. Noah was pale. His face had an even more fearful expression than Mason and Kieran. We sat in silence before Noah spoke again. Fuck, 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 fuck. What do we do? We, we need to call the police, I said, trying my best to hold back my panic. What about the woods? Kieran asked. Man, fuck the woods, Mason shouted. I'm never going back in there. We all nodded in agreement. We need to get out of here, I said, standing up straight. You don't need to tell me twice. Noah agreed. We hurriedly walked away from the trees that we never returned to, fearful of what lay within. A few days had gone by since Hayden's death. The police recovered his body during that time, and his funeral will be in the next few weeks. Closed casket, of course. Mason, Kieran, Noah, and I all refused to speak to the police on the matter. I mean, what could we say? We had no idea what happened. We were originally suspects for his murder until his autopsy. There was no evidence that anyone had killed him. No DNA was present on Hayden's corpse other than his own. But I know what killed him. It had been whatever creature had been stalking us. A face in the forest. And I know what wrong one means now. Every day the creature grows closer. 
I can tell what it looks like now. Hairless, gray, modded skin, long, gangly limbs that end in hands and feet with razor-sharp nails, and a long, thin head with sunken black eyes that never blink. I lock my windows and doors every night, and sometimes... I can hear it scratching at the glass of my window pane. It wants in... It wants me, and... And when it grows impatient enough... Nothing will stop it. Nothing will stop the face amongst the trees from taking me.